Question 16 about a mass between two springs. A stabilizing mechanism for electrical equipment on board a high speed train is modeled using a 5 gram mass. So it's going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. Just watch out for that. And two springs, as shown in figure 21.1. For testing purposes, the springs are horizontal and attached to two fixed supports in a lab. So these must be the two supports. There's your mass, there's your two springs. Explain why the mass oscillates with simple harmonic motion when displaced horizontally. I think this would be for the same reason anything uh, oscillates with simple harmonic motion. And that's going to be because there is an acceleration that is directly proportional to the negative of the displacement. So let's communicate that with uh, the two springs. Produce a, uh, I'll use the word restoring because they're both trying to push the mass back to where it started. So when I pull it this way, it's gonna try and push it back. When I pull it this way, it's gonna try and push it back. Restoring force. Both springs produce a restoring force to return the mass to its equilibrium, equilibrium position. This restoring force will cause an acceleration. Now here's the bit where I'm just literally pulling the answer out of my pocket and plunking on the page. Acceleration that is directly proportional to the displacement. one mark and in the opposite direction. Two marks, one for proportional to displacement, one for in the opposite direction. Okay, moving on, here's a graph of displacement against time. Here is uh, empty axes with kinetic energy, deeply suspicious. I don't know if you can remember the consolidation lesson where I asked you to mark a capital T on a series of graphs that looked similar to this. Everyone was very deeply suspicious and you should have been and the same is going to be true now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, I know that one of these marks is going to be for the graph that I'm about to draw for kinetic energy to link up with the graph above. So wherever I've got a, a maxima here, I'm just going to put a little dot because I know that wherever those maximas are, I want my kinetic energy to be nothing at all. And the reason for that is because at maximum displacement, the mass will be stopping and changing its direction momentarily. And at that particular moment, its velocity is going to be zero. And so its kinetic energy is going to be zero. Other thing to make a note of is that kinetic energy is a scalar. There's not really uh, such thing as negative kinetic energy in this context. So that means when the displacement is zero, that means it's moving at its fastest. So I'm expecting peaks at those particular points. So where I've got zero displacement, my velocity is at its maximum. So therefore my kinetic energy is going to be at its maximum. Now, because kinetic energy is a scalar, because kinetic energy is mv squared, the negative velocities get squared into a positive kinetic energy. So it doesn't really matter what the direction, what the direction of the velocity is. The squaring of the velocity makes that redundant, that negative sign redundant. So that's what we're looking for. One mark for everything being in the positive. No, no, none of these lines going into the negative kinetic energy region. And another mark for making it line up with the appropriate parts of uh, the graph above. And on to 16b part 1, I'm sorry, 16c part 1. Determine the uh, maximum acceleration of the mass during the oscillations. Well, we know that uh, A equals minus 2 pi F 
squared x, we know that uh, a max would occur, maximum acceleration, so if we get the minus sign, the displacement would become max, the amplitude. And I'm just gonna skip a, a step by putting two pi over the time period instead of f squared amplitude. So amplitude, we could probably read off the graph, and time, we could probably read off the graph as well. So from the graph, A equals capital T equals, let's have a look at the graph. A, the amplitude, seems to be 0, 5, and a little square 6 millimetres. So the amplitude, 6 times 10 to the minus 3 metres the time period. Uh, several ways to do this. I suppose you could, on the one hand, just uh, see when it starts to repeat for the first time. Pull a tangent, pull, sorry, pull a line down to there. Difficult to read. 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, 145 ish. So here I'll put 145 in milliseconds. So times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. But there's another way that we can do this as well and say that there is a one, two, three, three and a half full oscillations for a full duration of 500 milliseconds. And we can do 500 divided by three and a half, 3.5 equals, and we actually get 143-ish, let's say. But uh, as my estimate of 145 just from one oscillation is fine, that's cool. So if you were to be more precise about it, really, this could be a one, four, three, times 10 to the minus three seconds. But uh, moving forwards, I'll just use, uh, I'll use this number. So plugging these numbers now into this equation, we have open brackets two times pi divided by one, four, five times 10 to the minus three, close brackets square that and times by uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 3. So on my calculator, it was 10 to the minus 3 equals, and I have my maximum acceleration here of 11.3 uh, meters seconds to the minus 2. So 11.3 meters seconds to the minus 2. Okay, next part, part two, calculate the maximum kinetic energy. So if I take my uh, half mv squared for kinetic energy max, I need velocity max. For velocity max, we use 2 pi fa, or as would be more handy here, uh, v max equals 2 pi a over capital T. Um, so that's going to be 2 times pi times 6 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 145 times 10 to the minus 3. Plug that in on my cal onto the calculator, 2 times equals. So I get a velocity of uh, 0.26 meters seconds to the minus one. That then becomes the velocity max in my kinetic energy equation. So I've got a half times the mass converted into kilograms times by uh, 0.26 squared. So that on the calculator, I've got 0.26 on the calculator. So if I square that equals and then work my way backwards times by the mass five times 10 to the minus three equals times a half, 0.5. And I end up with the kinetic energy of maximum of 1.6899, so call it 1.7, times 10 to the minus four joules. And that would be my answer here. 1.7 times 10 minus four joules.